Hello, I am Marcelo, Marcelo Miranda. I'm a lecturer in the School of Chemistry of the University of Leeds. And I'm here today to talk to you about entropy. Many of the people who have heard about entropy will know that entropy is somehow related to disorder and to randomness. But is that something that you understand yourself? Do you really know how disorder and randomness are turned into numbers, that is to say, values for the entropy? Well, if you don't know, watch on. By the end of this podcast, you will know how entropy measures, quantifies, put values into disorder and randomness. Well, to get there, you're going to need to take three steps. The very first step is going to be a simple example. We're going to be looking at six molecules and see how energy can be distributed among them. On the second example, we're going to see how the entropy is a handy way of expressing the spread of energy among a molecules, the molecules in a set of molecules. And in the third step, then we are going to see how entropy actually expresses disorder and randomness. Okay, so this is step number one. Think about this. You have six molecules, and you want to spread those molecules over a bunch of energy levels. Perhaps you want to have these molecules with low energy, with intermediate energy, or with high energy. The question is, how many different ways of spreading these molecules over these energy levels are there? First situation to consider is how many ways are there to put all molecules in the lowest energy state? Well, this is a simple one. There's only one way of doing it. The molecules, they are all in the low energy state. That's the end of the story. Now we're going to complicate things a little bit. Let's say that we want to move one of these molecules to the intermediate state. How many ways of doing this are there? Well, the answer is here. There are six ways to move one of the six molecules up. You can pick the red molecule, or the green molecule, or the blue molecule, and so on, because there are six molecules in total. There are six ways of doing this. But please notice this. If you have all these molecules inside a jar, well, then you don't know which one is red or green or blue. You can identify them. There's just six ways of doing the same thing, and you cannot tell them apart. Now let's complicate the thing further still. Let's suppose that you have the six molecules and want to spread them evenly over the energy levels. That is to say, to put two molecules on each of the three energy levels. How many ways are there of doing this? Well, it turns out that the answer for this question is here on the board. There are 90 different ways of arranging the six molecules with two on each of three energy levels. At this point, perhaps you want to pause this podcast and really check that all these arrangements are different, all 90 ones of them are different. But the message here is, is that, well, you can calculate the spread of molecules over energy level. That's something that's going to come in handy for us lever. Calculate how many arrangements there is for a certain spread of energy among the molecules in your sample. All right, now it's time to take our second step. This, after this step, you're going to understand why the entropy is a handy way of calculating how many arrangements there are when you want to spread energies in a particular way among a set of molecules. We have already seen that when you have six molecules, you want to put two on each energy level. There are 90 ways of doing this, as it says on the slides. Six molecules, three, two on each one of the three energy levels. There are 90 ways of doing it. Well, if you have a few more molecules, if you have nine molecules, and then you want to spread them evenly, you have to put three molecules on each one of those three energy levels. Well, if you counted the arrangements, there's a mathematical way of calculating this, there's 1,680 arrangements. You see that the number of, ranges, of arrangements is growing very quickly. If we go to 30 molecules, well, you want to spread them evenly, 
you have to put 10 molecules on each of those three energy levels, you already have well over 5 trillion possible arrangements. Well, you see that this number is growing really fast. Now try to picture what happens when you have a microscopic sample, something that you can actually see, hold in your hands. There's a huge number of molecules there. Well, this number here is going to be really enormous, very, very large. And thinking about when you have all molecules in the ground state, there's only one arrangement, and you're counting something that changes from one to over a huge number, well, that's not a very practical scale. Plus, there is another thing. If you look at these things that we have, did, have done with six or nine or 30 molecules, in a way, it's always the same. We are always putting one-third of the molecule on each of the three energy levels. Well, shouldn't we be getting the same results about the spreading of that energy over the molecules, over their energy levels? Well, it turns out that that's exactly where the entropy comes in. If we calculate the entropy for each of the three situations that we were looking at before, either six molecules or nine molecules or 30 molecules, a third of them for each energy level, you always get that the entropy is a number called the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the natural logarithm of number three, which is about 1.1. So in all three cases, you have the same entropy, 1.1 times the value of the Boltzmann constant. That's a scale that goes now from zero to a number that is not too large. It's a lot more convenient. So the point of this second step was to tell you that with the entropy, we can get a number that reflects that we are looking at the spread of the energy here rather than the number of molecules. What I'm going to do next is to explain to you how exactly this number here is calculated. The entropy is calculated with this formula here. Well, at least if you want to calculate it from the numbers of molecules on each energy level. You pick up the fraction of molecules on each one of the three energy levels. So you notice that the absolute number of molecules is always canceled out. It's only the fraction that matters. And for each energy level, you take the logarithm of the fraction, multiply by the fraction again, add everything up. That's the formula for the entropy. Not very complicated. If you have 100 energy levels, you're going to have 100 terms like this on your summation. But there's nothing new there. It's just a formula that is fairly simple to use. Well, now comes the third of those three steps I mentioned before. This is the step where I'm going to show to you how you actually relate entropy to disorder and to randomness. To think about this, think about something that is a little bit easier to visualize than molecules spread over an energy level. Think about books spread over the shelves of a bookshelf. Think about this. We have six books. Those books are to go over three shelves of a bookshelf. You can put the books on the lower shelf, on the middle shelf, or on the top shelf. Oh, let's assume first that you are a very organized person and that every single time that you pick up a book, you put it back on the bottom shelf. And one day you want me to go there and pick up one of those books for you. Well, you can tell me with absolutely certainty, it doesn't matter what book you want, you can say, Marcelo, you're going to find that book on the bottom shelf. And sure enough, I walk into this room. It doesn't matter if you wanted the green book, the pink book, the brown book, the red one. Sure enough, I'm going to find it at the bottom shelf. But let's suppose now that one day you were in a little bit of a hurry and you dropped one of the books on the middle shelf. Now, if you want me to pick up one book, well, the best you can do is say, Marcelo, could you please go to that room, to the bookshelf, pick up a book for me? Chances are you're going to find it on the bottom shelf. You can no longer say it is on the bottom shelf. There's some randomness, some disorder that has crept in at your book arrangements. The best you can tell me is that chances are that I'm going to find the book on the bottom shelf. Indeed, there's five out of six about 83% chance that I will find whatever book you ask for me in the bottom shelf. Only if you ask for the brown book, 
that's one sixth or about 70% of the total chance, then I'm gonna find it somewhere else. But let's suppose that you're a real messy person. Every day you pick up a book, you put some other in one shelf or another, and you end up with books randomly arranged, two on each shelf. If you want me to go back to that room, pick up one book for me, one book for you, you can give me no indication whatsoever about the shelf the book's on. There is total randomness, total disorder. All you can do is apologize. You're gonna say, Marcelo, I'm sorry, but I have no idea what shelf this book is on. Well, now if you remember that molecules are arranged over energy levels, just as these books have been arranged over bookshelves, well, that's how entropy is related to randomness and to disorder. So now you know how the entropy is calculated. The key idea is that the entropy measures how molecules are spread over the energy levels that they can be found in, but the entropy does that in a way that is independent of the actual number of molecules that is there. It really talks about the spread of molecule rather than about the spread of energy, rather than about the number of molecules on each energy level. And you already know as well how the entropy is related to disorder and to randomness. It has to do with the disorder of the molecules, the randomness in their occupation or of their energy levels. Or if you think about the books on a bookshelf, it, the entropy has to do with how disorderly the books are arranged on the bookshelves you can put them on. Thank you for watching.